You and I with Rashmi Shetty is a human library audio podcast bringing in stories of people you and I can draw inspiration from. Welcome to the third season of this amazing story listening journey. Ordinary folks, extraordinary lives, their uniqueness and individuality, making them interesting to talk to and to listen to. Each one of them completely connected to the voice in me and with motivational stories of moving beyond themselves to make a difference in the world. A reaffirmation of the fact, open your eyes wider. The world is far more beautiful when we acknowledge the presence of both you and I. Our guest today is Gaurav Sharma. Gaurav currently works as the Chief Excellence Officer at LEAD, a unicorn startup. He's the co-author of two coffee table books on R.D. Berman titled Strings of Eternity and Diamonds and Rust, and has worked on national award-winning film Pancham Unmixed and a film on Jagjit Singh titled Kagas Ki Kashti. Gaurav is a graduate from IIT Bombay, a gold medalist from IIM, an ex-business consultant and a strategy professional. As a leadership and management speaker, he has taken multiple sessions on the life and musical journey of R.D. Berman, taking inspiration from different fields, business, science, mathematics, and management. He provides insights into the journey of both life and leadership. Listen in as Gaurav shares his life, his philosophy, and the importance of R.D. Berman. Gaurav, I've known you for so many years, but you know, you always intrigue me because there's a part of you that I'm still curious to know about and so decided to invite you to the podcast to dissect that Gaurav that I don't know I haven't met. So welcome to you and I with Rashmi Shed. Thank you so much, Rashmi. I think uh, first of all, this is my privilege and honor. You know, we have normally shared the stage together and my whole interaction to you or exposure to you has been through your voice yes. uh, which is absolutely refreshing and you know as Osa Zakirusen told you that your voice auditorium ko bhar deti. I think that was a beautiful compliment coming in with the help of just one microphone and the uh, grace of your voice you're able to just fill the auditorium and hence uh, for me it has always been a big challenge to stand up with you on the stage, share something from my side and match up to your voice and grace, which is not possible at all. But, you know, it's it's an honor. It's really an honor because you've been somebody who's inspired a lot of people, including corporates, including, you know, on your personal space as well. You've been engaging with a lot of people, storytelling, voice modulation, something that this world really needs. The art of conversation is literally dead today. We are all more engaged on social media, you know, and I, I remember somebody mentioning very nicely that you don't post on social media, you perform on social media. <laughs> People are performing for others. How will they take it? And in this world, you're able to hold meaningful conversations. So uh, looking forward to this one. You know, I got so carried away, Gaurav, that for a second, I forgot I'm hosting you on the podcast. <laughs> and this is going to be about you. So switching off from there now. <laughs> I, I never expected you to speak so much because you're a man of few words. It's so difficult to talk to you and build a conversation. You need to be really familiar. So were you always this quiet person that little Gaurav was somebody that mama and papa had to pull out to talk to people, always lost in books, nerdy, or uh, did life and your challenges change you to somebody who was very quiet? I, I want to know your journey from little Gaurav to the Gaurav Sharma that the world knows you today as. Wow. Okay. So you'll be very surprised to know I was a very, very talkative uh, kid, by the way. Very talkative. And whenever I used to come from an examination, my mother used to ask me, are you sure you were quiet for three hours? I always say I come from a very R&D research-oriented family. So my uh, mother actually is a person of few words. My father, he's one of those intellectuals, always into crossword. And my mother will be found doing Sudoku somewhere. And they're just busy in their world. They don't care about whatever else is happening and they don't get bothered. I think that's a very, very big learning that I need to have because in today's day and age, how do you isolate yourselves and stay happy? They say 
just stay healthy and have a poor memory and you'll be happy <laughs> so that's what i think they have a knack for uh, having a poor memory so to speak my father he was with the reserve bank of india so you know a little bit of a regulator kind of a person uh, even my elder brother so he was that brainy chap the boy of few words who always used to get that five marks extra than whatever i got in my life in my schooling my sister joined sebi she was with securities exchange board of india so we are two regulators uh, and i turned out to be very different because uh, you know i was very involved in extra curriculars as i was telling you actually talkative and i've kind of mellowed down now for this podcast you will see me talking a lot because <laughs> i think it's a platform uh, that you know it it needs me to communicate thoroughly with you for you to you know deep dive into the journey anybody who knows you will obviously start with a lot of things about you rashmi though i i want you to know that but you know i was always outgoing and there's a theory which says that some children tend to be very different from their parents this happens in siblings also this happens in spouses also this happens in friends also and uh, normally they say birds of a feather flock together but also sometimes complementary skills also also are you know developed uh, as we grow along so i'm very different very social that way have a certain you know set of friends outgoing somebody who likes to be on the stage and address people uh, having a connect with people so to speak uh, my motto always somehow has been to bring smiles on people's face somehow i don't know how but even as a youngster there's a very famous anecdote my mother always tells people i was in a school in delhi uh, this was a dav public school in vasant vihar and south delhi we had teachers who were absolutely strict and coming from a teaching background and very good families and so on so there was somebody who would intimidate others and then the strictest of the teacher she would come walk up to me with high heels and everybody would be scared of her and she'll just pick me up take me to the staff room put me on the table and say crack some jokes she somehow liked me and she encouraged me to speak and i guess i'm and i'm by the way i'm talking about second standard i'm talking about third grade and somewhere i feel she kind of pushed me this is what teachers do to you they push me into a space where just go up there and talk say something and that kind of brought that confidence and removed stage fright for me so actually little got up was uh, pretty much uh, outgoing actually Okay this is unbelievable for me because from the time I've met you I've seen you as very sober so this little gorav who was so talkative was also a class topper so teacher spet as one of the most perfect students all well rounded good question actually you will be surprised to know in my 10th grade <clears throat> my rank was 23 or 24 in the class and uh, by then we had moved to bhopal so my father was with the reserve bank so i was born in bombay we moved to delhi then i did my 7 to 12th in bhopal now this is a cbse school in in a state where mp board schools are very common and cbse has a rigorous attendance policy but state board is very very lenient about attendance you come don't come doesn't matter and everybody in those days used to prepare for iit 10th 7th 8th 9th 10th grade i used to get 22 23 25 rank but i was very very active in extracurriculars dramatics and uh, you know elocution debate and all those things now in 10th grade i got 23 uh, rank and then in 11th grade i got first rank so my teacher walks up to me and says don't be so happy because top 1 to 22 have left the school to go to state board schools so that they can prepare for iit now you better study hard because hence you are rank 1 you know that gave a lot of confidence to me a lot of boost to me somehow carol dweck has this book called the growth mindset and um, for those who don't want to read the book the tech talk is good enough what she has uh, delivered a brilliant book i mean the power of giving a sense of achievement in a child it's dramatic you just have to tell the child you're doing fine you're good you're fine so when i got the first rank i started believing in myself though she came and brought me down to the earth but i mean she also said it and so on and eventually from that whole batch of mine i was the only one who got into iit and none of the others got in by the way i'm i'm not saying i'm i'm special or different but i think somewhere all through 11th and 12th i won 
all round performance awards dramatics this that all of those things and there was a time when there was a school picnic in 12th grade and as you know when people prepare for iit they bunk all the picnics and they will go study and so on and i there was a friend of mine two three of us we were there and we attended the picnic next day our class teacher i still remember her name uh, rodrix ma'am Rodrix was one of the senior most teachers in Bhopal, a legend. This was Campion School, uh, run by an Italian father, and you know it was one of those iconic schools. By the way, one a Campion is in uh, Bombay, one is in Bhopal, and Bhopal is known for rank one IIT JE, some nineteen eighties batch, much ten fifteen years before us. But she called us three of us in front of the whole class, and she said, "Most of you bunked yesterday's picnic. You were not participating." these three boys and it was a boys school these three boys came i'm telling you these three will do well in their competitive exams i don't know about others you better study hard and because you're bunking picnics and all those things but please stay involved in school activities stay with the community that will make you richer and actually one of them he went into a medical school is a big surgeon today the other one he went to jamshedpur uh, a big engineering college there i of course went to iit bombay and so on so i think it is these blessings it is these this whole um sense of being active or so showing passion in one area which also reflects in the other if you are passionate about extracurriculars being involved in the community doing something for everyone and with everyone rather it will also show up in your academics and work and anything that you want to do so you know typically i hire for passion so that is one thing that And so I was not not really top of the, but it's a good case study where a small boost can actually uh, yeah. give you a lot of self. Yeah, that is so true, and this is such a beautiful story. I think students should hear how much the te- and teachers, especially on how much one remark of a teacher, random remark, can make the child actually find himself. Then he sits down to reflect. If you'd taken the teacher seriously, maybe you'd have thought, yeah, maybe because they are not there. but it exactly. actually gave you a different turn in life now this is interesting getting into iit means a lot of prep for je so and students like you said sacrifice 11th and 12th some even 10th now they start from 6th standard with foundation and yeah. all the courses yeah. so how did you manage it all gorov and iit mumbai uh, bombay is tough to get into uh, it's one mm. of the top iits in india so how did you manage to just balance it all yeah so i think one thing you know we all reflect back uh, and i want to do come from macro to micro here you know in the americas they say 1950s was the best decade in india they say 1980s was the best decade when you know some of us had the best of our time the common thread between these two is that this was a time when everybody around you was earning the same amount of money they were driving the same cars uh, if you had a phone they will also have a phone you have a black and white tv they will also have a black and white tv that whole sense of uh, you know uh, security and confidence today i feel the competition has got aggravated not because of the sheer number of people competing mm-hmm. it is actually because of the way we are perceiving each other's lives you're not we are not competing with our own excellence or our own brilliance today we are competing with somebody else and that i think is one thing which really helped me in my childhood because first of all i was not competing with anybody else it was not like wo dekho unka beta itna hai kar raha hai wo kar because if that chap is studying at 4 pm i am also studying at 4 pm uh, it's not that he is having the best laptop of you know macbook uh, specifications and i am working on some old desktop no we never had computers we we were all listening to actually this is why i'm wearing this cassette right on my <laughs> just because i used to listen to arti burman's music and i just started exploring him and uh, there was some music being played in the background uh, i'm studying without worrying about what happens to our financial social mental status in the company in the in the country in the society and so nothing no outside distractions a eh? be no cable tv or you know the social media distraction so i think we had it easier though uh, you know we tend to say the next generation is having it easier and they are just messing it up no 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 we definitely had it easier i had nothing else to do 
this tape recorder of mine, whatever songs it will play, I have to listen to that. I can't go on YouTube and put anything I want. That is one. Second, there is no pressure, I would say, which was coming in undue from other people's status or so on. The third thing I would say is that I think I was blessed with some very good teachers. First and foremost, my class teachers were very good. I didn't really have to go for too much coaching or anything like that. Some of the teachers were the best teachers. Uh, we respected them. They gave us the nuggets, which I don't think anybody else outside the classroom can. I strongly believe in good classroom teaching. And third, very important factor for me was my father taught me mathematics, by the way. He's an MSc in mathematics and he would have picked up 12th grade calculus and probability and those difficult topics after 20, 25 years of him studying it. But he could have a sense of brushing his own knowledge and then teaching me. So that personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, it was not like a quota, a big classroom of 65 students and you don't know what you're doing. It was some of the finest teachers are teaching us, my father, for example. And finally, I think, uh, as I said, no distractions, so I could focus and study. Uh, that's very, very important. I think today, most of our, uh, we have all ourselves distracted our children, forget about children getting distracted. Yeah. I think when people crib, the child is eating junk or watching junk, but the point is that if you have a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola in your refrigerator, how will you stop the child? If you are going out for McDonald's and stuff, how will your child stop your child and so on? So I think the personal sacrifices that our parents made to make sure that we can focus on our studies, I think that is some a lesson for us to learn. So it's not really my doing. It's about, the you know, as they say, the plant won't grow on its own. Yeah. You can't keep slapping the rose, yeah. grow faster, grow faster. You have to put the right manure, right water, right amount of, you know, good quality soil and so so that whole ecosystem was created, I feel, and mm -hmm. I was lucky that I could then grow. Whatever you said about that generation, the 80s, uh, 70s, 80s, uh, what I can think of is a discussion uh, um, I was having with a friend yesterday and we were talking about contentment. Okay, somehow mm. uh, that term doesn't seem to fit in today uh, because in spite of having everything, people are not content. God knows what they're seeking. But there was a time when people were content, not with only what they had materially around them, but overall, there was nothing very great pushing them saying, okay, strive harder, strive harder. Is contentment good in a way? Because today's kids don't have that. They have everything and still don't have it. So what is it that you would see would bring balance in both these 80s kids that you just described to today's yeah. children? Yeah, I think it's not easy, first of all. I think I can give a lot of gyan sitting here, but uh, it's a battle. It's a daily battle personally for me also, for my wife, for the family. And honestly, I mean, we seek inspiration from, for example, people like you, Rashmi. And you'll be surprised this was, I was reading Panchatantra, Sanskrit version, so that I can be sure when it's, the shlok, and then the shlok is translated into Hindi. So you know it's not yeah. any faff. Mm -hmm. So there's a beautiful line there. Children tend to imitate your thoughts, mm -hmm. the way you react to situations. And it's not only children, but anything that we do. And the beautiful line there was, I remember, it said, Ashva, which is horse, Shastra, Shastra, Veena, Vani, Nar, Nari. All of these things will behave the way the person holding them will behave. So by Nar Nari, they mean your employees or your children. By Ashwa, if you sit on a horse, and I was learning horse riding for some time, and then we just couldn't continue because of uh, hectic schedules and all. But the teacher used to tell me that the horse is catching your cue. You don't have to be like Dharmendra and do all this chabuk and all, nothing. Horse just, if you turn this side, the horse will turn this side actually. You don't have to keep pulling the leash and stuff. So it's a beautiful equation between the horse rider and the horse. Similarly, your Shastra, the weapon can be in the hand of Arjun, it can be in the hand of Duryodhan, but it will behave differently because the person holding it. Shastra, the knowledge. Veena, the instrument. Vani, your voice. And Naranari. So I think what is important is that we just have to keep reminding ourselves. There are some amazing books that are available which can help us stay grounded and tell us about the reality of life. And they say that, you know, your happiness is not decided by how much you have. It is decided by how much you want. First, fix that want. And please make sure it doesn't change every five years. Because today I'm happy with X car. Tomorrow, my friends have Y car. So I need a Z. That's not correct. So I think contentment comes from what is it that I need? Car, 
takes me from point A to point B. It should save me my fuel or whatever it is. It should be X amount of comfort and so on. And then I fix, okay, fine, this is what I want. Sadhguru says something very good, right? We keep dreaming about traffic on the road. But yeah, you earned all your life to buy the dream car. Now the traffic is making you sit in the dream car. You better enjoy the dream car, right? So correct. So I, in fact, like traffic jams because that gives me a chance to listen to more music or talk to somebody, connect with somebody, call up somebody and say, hey, how are you doing? And so on, right? So that is one. Second, I think if we notice a lot of us are now living in houses, there are more bathrooms and the number of rooms and so on and so forth. There's no limit to it. And finally, none of this matters. Finally, what matters is what is it that you really need around you that will give you happiness? If we are able to identify that and then say this much is enough, then anything above that is bonus. Blessings of elders or God or whatever it is. I mean, we just say that fine, whatever else I have, can I put it to good use? Can I save it for investments and so on and so forth? I think then that financial security, I think is very, very important for all of us. So we need to fix that too. Having a sense of contentment through whatever gives us happiness. Some people it's books, for some people it's music, for some people it's actually more and more time with family. For some people it is more time in isolation. And finally, for some people it's the social cause. So one line that I read, this was a very beautiful book called Psychology of Money. It's a highly recommended book, uh, keeps us very grounded. And the book said, finally, whatever you earn doesn't matter. But what matters is you're really free when you are in control of your time. If you can decide on a given morning, today, this is what I will do for these many hours, then this I'll do, then this is what I'll do. Unless somebody else comes and dictates it. When somebody else comes and dictates your time, you are a slave. Even if you are a CEO of a company or the big investor, if you are not in control of your time, you will not. But if you're retired or even if you're working in an X organization, but you seem to be in control of your time, you feel that, you know, I can divide my day based on what I want to do. The happiness quotient goes. I think that eventually is the key to contentment, so to speak, I feel. And I think life teaches you best. So uh, now that you're wearing the cassette t-shirt, I need to ask you, you finished 12th, you got into IIT Bombay. Did Adi Berman enter IIT with you? Or were you yes. already an Adi Berman fan? Because today, most of the world knows Gaurav Sharma as that encyclopedia of Pancham. Any question, any doubt, any film, any song of Pancham, you can ask Gaurav and Gaurav will have the answer. Now that you're wearing this t-shirt, I'm so glad you did because it leads me to that question, which makes you such an interesting human being of being able to balance it all so early in life. Studies in IIT is no joke. It's pretty competitive because the best brains come in. But you're able to find that balance again about going deep into a human being who gave us such amazing music and didn't care about recognition. He just continued creating, though recognition came much after he left. Much later. Yeah, it, it is something about him that innovation was the driving force for him. So how did you find Pancham and how did you balance college in Pancham? See, actually, uh, just before IIT, I had become an Adi fan. Unfortunately, after he had died. It's very interesting because I remember I was in my 10th grade and uh, in the news in Doordarshan at 8.38 p.m. Typically, they will just need, read the news like a documentation. And I re still remember it said, Tuprasit Sangeetkar Rahul Dev Barman ka aaj Mumbai mein, ya Bombay was, you know, mein, they used to call it Bombay mein. Dehant ho gaya. And this is how they used to announce on television. And for me, it, the news did not make any sense. I mean, I, I didn't know who is Adi Burman. And I had no idea. And I remember my father was sitting there and everybody just saw the news and fine. Okay. Now this shows, by the way, how much Adi was out of league in those days. He was not in the mainstream those days. Now, this is January 94. Cut to May 1994. I am in Kasoli, which is a beautiful hill station. It's an army cantonment area. My aunt used to be with the armed forces. So we went there to their house and this is now on top of the hills, Himalayas, and it is raining. It is cloudy. And I was alone. My siblings were not with me that time. I was with my cousin. Both of us used to just hang around and do practically nothing. And parents used to be busy with their own things. And she had just bought a cassette of 1942, a love story. That cassette had released after Adi Berman died. And imagine in Kasoli with the mist and the rain and everything I'm listening to as a 14-year-old, Rim Jim, Rim Jim and Ek Ladki Ko Dekha. And they had no other, luckily, not too many cassettes. So this was playing on loop. It was like that Bodh Gaya moment for Buddha. You know, it, 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 I just hate me. I don't know what happened. And I was never into music or aisa hai ki waisa hai. Sika bhi nahi, kabhi sika nahi. I'm a Kaan Sin, not a Tan Sin at all. Like, <laughs> I just have a ear, I guess. That had an impact for 
the first time in my life, I picked up a cassette cover and I read Rahul Dev Varma. Period. Khatam. Okay. Then my brother, he got a job. He started working. And then he used to say, Eh, Hareman is very good. Roja, Bombay, all this thing. I used to say, Nay, nay. Actually, you know what? Adi Varman. I say, time pass me. I would say, Adi Varman is very good. Because I have to compete with my brother. So on my birthday, he sent me a double cassette set of Gulzar Remembers Pancham. And that is the cassette set which I used to listen to while studying. And slowly, and now luckily, that cassette set as Gulzar Saab talking about Adi, it has Adi's own voice. It has some of his beautiful songs. And it just started hitting me that this person seems to be very different. And that is when I realized there are some cassettes in the house which I realized were all Adi. Shan, Love Story, some of those albums were always there in our house. So by the time I went to IIT, I at least had some interest in this gentleman. Only because of his music, nothing else. I have, right now, I have no idea. By 98, I have no idea who is this man. I just know good music, good music, good music. I have not found any bad song, good music, good music, no bad song, good music. Yes. Then I go to IIT and first time we get access to a computer lab. So we have a desktop, Red If Mail was new and Google had come 1998. So I just sat and I didn't know what to do. So I started typing Adi Burman and interviews and articles and websites started reading. And then I realized, yeah, this person's good, but he seems to be a great human being as well. And slowly I started collecting those articles, saving them in a hard disk, somewhere in a folder and so on. Even today, by the way, if you go to IIT Bombay or any of the engineering colleges, they will have music folders in the servers. One folder called AR Rahman, one folder called RD Burman, and then miscellaneous. Even today, in 2024, that's the power of this music. And then I started playing his music in the hostel and so on. And then a lot of friends started saying, Are it's good, started discovering. And that is when slowly and steadily, it, it's like I told you, you know, a confidence de do to, that growth mindset happened. So for me, I started being known as RD fan. So I started taking more interest, then got known more, then more interest. So it just got paralleling up. And eventually I realized I have to meet everybody who is associated with him. There was something interesting hua tha. By the way, uh, in first year in IIT, you can select extracurricular activities. So I select vocals. I will learn singing. So I went to a singing class in IIT. One ma'am used to come from Andheri and very good teacher and so on. So she was preparing us for a Gandhi Jayanti program called Anjali. Even today it happens in IIT. So students will sing bhajans. And she tried very best to make me sing. I couldn't sing. She said, what else can you do? Can you play an instrument? I said, no, I don't know how to play an instrument. I was just studying for IIT. I don't know how to play anything. Achha. Can you talk? I said, yeah, yeah, that I can do. So she said, then why don't you do one thing? You become the compare. This is the first time in my life that I, other than elocution and debate, that I became a compare of a bhajan program. And I just went back to my grandmother and I used to listen to all these Morari Bapu and Oja Bai and all those Pravachan used to come on TV because my mom, grandmother used to listen to them and she had some books. So I used to collect some stories. So wo second October Gandhi Janti program, I first time became officially the compare in IIT, first year. And others are singing. <laughs> I still remember there was a song which was about to be played and the director who was there in those days his wife dozed off during the program in the front seat when the next song was about to be sung and I said the next song I will not tell you much about it but it's a beautiful bhajan which is very relevant to some people in this room so let's listen to the bhajan and the bhajan was Jago Mahadev she got the joke but <clears throat> she was not offended <clears throat> you know she just laughed it off and it was just a joke between her and me right because nobody else knows she's in the front row but she never came backstage and said you know I'll, I'll not let you pass this grade or whatever. So, but my point is, this, that's how this journey started. Then Ustaz Jamjad Ali Khan came, Jagji Singh came, Louis Banks came, everybody who used to come to IIT for the last next five years. I used to, I was, a, I was in a five-year program. So I used to host all the concerts and I used to go backstage, show them their profile and say, this is what I'm going to read. They would add, subtract something. And then I will say, once this is done, can you tell me about R.D. Verma? So Ustaz Amjad Ali Khan will look at me and say, mm, come, let's go for a walk. I will tell you about Adi Verman. Uh, Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma, Pandit Ronu Majumdar once came. So I asked him, Louis Banks, when he came, I asked him. So even today, if I meet, say, an Amitabh Bachchan or anybody, my second, third question to them would be, tell me anything about Adi Verman. That's how this thing got built and just kept collecting information. What prompted you to ask them that question? Because you know they have worked with him or it was just your curiosity of, who is this man and did he even influence them? How did you even think that you can ask them and you would get an answer? Both the things. So number one is, a lot of them I knew had worked with him and 
there were so many surprises rashmi i i can't believe everybody has a personal adi burman story so by the way most musicians the top musicians of the world have died at a mysterious age of 27 it's very surprising most of the top notch like jim morrison if i'm not wrong plus even the new film that is coming amar singh chamkila there's something about magical about 27 there are at least four or five top notch musicians who have singers etc who've been killed or who died at the age of 27 and there's a documentary also called 27 i think on this gap factor 27 into 2 54 arti burman's death in this so called short span of life i feel 54 is also a short span of life he has touched so many lives it's unbelievable i mean nida fazli who is the lyricist official lyricist of most jagjit singh songs has worked on two songs of arti burman in an interview talks about arti burman he doesn't need to i mean those two are forgettable songs you don't you don't have to but he said this guy just came to know i'm struggling so his driver left a packet in my hand and went off pancham da ne diya hai and that packet had 10000 rupees the beauty was if i ask somebody invariably they will say something about i asked pandit birju maharaj to unka khatak ka program tha and i went to drop him to kaf parade i used to live in kolaba those days so kaf parade mein shekhar bajaj ke ghar mein unko drop kiya so on the way i asked him tell me about adi burman then he said are unke sath to hamara acha dosti tha aasha ji lata ji then their house came prabhu kunj mm-hmm. and he showed me also ye dekho ye unka ghar hai yahan pe beech mein pancham da wahan rehte the matlab so anything any nugget can come ronu majumdar of course shiv kumar sharma hari prasad chaurasia they will all have stories by the way i asked louis banks and i had no idea that louis banks godfather is rd rd brought him from calcutta if you go to louis banks studio even today there's a photograph of rd on the in the studio oh. and who can imagine jazz king he's playing fusion music and he will talk about so i used to just take a chance thinking pushne mein kya ja raha hai so i'm second i asked you like why even are you asking about rd burman nobody asked you no party was surprised in fact as a college student while shreya gosal's first album had come just her first album i think bansali film had come in which she she had sung songs devdas devdas released and the next month she came to promote devdas in planet m in vt station and i used to live in kolaba so i just went ki shreya gosal hai to and i was looking for rd's cassettes and cds and she was on the stage and then they said audience can request song and then i told her uh, i just raised my hand and they said oh che to koi college ka bachcha hai to theek hai and she was also very young those days so i told shreya why don't you sing rena beeti jaan she was like oh sorry wow you like 2003 rena beeti jaye and i said yeah i mean it will sound good in your voice and she sang and then i went to take her autograph on one of the cds and whatever i mean that was the whole promotion going on and when i reached her she said by the way you made made me sing my favorite song I'm a big Lata RD fan, and it is so good to see a youngster asking me to sing Rena Bitti Jai. More power to you. Clearly, he was part of your life for sure. And then came the collaboration and the book, which was national award winning. How did that journey progress? Because you were also in college parallelly. When you finished college, yeah. what was your uh, end result in college? Well, when I finished college, IIT, I had told my father one thing that he was a little worried because I was too much into extracurriculars in a engineering college. So I told him, "Deco, one thing I can promise you: we get grades out of ten, and it is across five years. So what happens is ten semesters, it will get cumulative. If yeah. you mess up in one semester, it will mess." Of the score. So I told him, I promise you, my score in IIT at the end of ten semesters will not drop below eight. And he said, fine, that's okay with me. But I'll do everything. I'll do acting, theater, voiceover, everything. I did uh, comparing, of course. I ended up with eight point six three on a scale of ten, and got all the all rounder institute citation, all those kind of things. I was a music seki also. Election larke, you know, you go do your propaganda, and you have fancy elections and all that. Yeah, and music seki ban ke. By the way, that was another coincidence. So we used to have this program called Sur Bahar, which is like actual Bombay musicians used to come and students will sing, and the musician orchestra will be professional musicians from somewhere in Bombay. And one uncle used to come with these people. He used to we used to call him Daddy. Or what time? By that concerts, Indian Idol to Thai ni. So these. Guys used to come and perform with our artists. By the time I was the music seeker in third year, fourth year, I realized half of them they have played with Asha Ji or R D or and I used to play. I used to give them a list of R D songs and they used to say, "क्या बढ़िया गाना है यार क्या बढ़िया गाना सिलेक्ट किया क्या बढ़िया तुम कौन हो भाई तुमको ये गाना है because उस समय Anu Malik and all those R D Burman and they used to feel so charged up whenever we I used to say कि यार ये we'll play this one and Daddy used to love this whole part of the thing. So Surbahar. I made it grand. I brought it into open air theater, and I said, "Let's go big scale." We will do it. Took permission till 2 a.m. till 10 p.m. Normally concerts are allowed, but I took. I made the dean sign a paper. So when security came to stop the concert, I said, "I have the dean's 
signature for 2 am and all those things happened but point being this whole extra curriculars gave me a lot of uh, real exposure of working with people and some people in it are very very good in what they do right some volleyball players will be national level actors one of my batchmates he's the executive producer of so many big shows like on netflix like mamla legal hai panchayat etc so he went on to become big in the industry and so on and all from core iit background yeah so that's how this was end of iit and then when i went to dubai a new chapter opened in the rd burman thing and when i came back from dubai that's when i realized a film on rd is being made and uh, got in touch with brahmanand the filmmaker and then we collaborated on this on this beautiful film on rd so clearly rd chose you uh, on how he came into your life after yeah. he left and then on how it went deeper and the love affair still continues uh, that's the best part because uh, when it comes to his music everyone who talks about music talks about rd burman who know a little bit about music have him as part of their uh, filmography when they talk about good music and they bring out their repertoire of songs that they would love to sing one day so here is this man who has completely captivated the world post his death years after suddenly yeah. he woke up and you are such a big fan so how would you what would you call this phenomenon god of for adi adi's success for the love that yeah. people hold for him yeah. so much more now than when he was there yeah yeah i think uh, you know i feel music draws extremely sharp uh, emotions in people i think first and foremost the beauty of rd's work is that it is music which anybody can naturally every human being naturally is lover of music right i mean you see a random guy walking on the road and if there is music being played on loudspeaker his or her walk will change with the rhythm right i mean everybody has a rhythm we have our heart beating we have children intuitively uh, relating to music now the best part about some of these things music and i feel food these two things people relate to right these touch i somehow he's good at and he was good at both he was good at both and you know there's a famous saying ki gana ya raag khana aur pagdi ye teen cheez fir se same tarike se nahi kar sakte so if you have created something in music or in cooking or a turban tied in a certain way you cannot repeat it the same way second time right so the beauty is that people have also realized that what arti parman has made in music is something which cannot be recreated it cannot be done again even by arti himself because what he has created is something which is you know it's is that whole energy that whole moment that whole phenomenon that came together so i think that realization that people are getting in those days less technology more people jamming and coming together a lot of unplugged music a lot of acoustic music equipment i mean what really amazes people i think the phenomenon why he's becoming more and more popular is because you pick up his album like for example dil padosi hai and if anybody listening to that podcast wants to just get small exposure into rd's world just listen to dil padosi hai a private album asha ji gulzar and rd but that album was recorded in a makeshift studio of temporary studio of hmv in church gate when their big studio was under renovation there was traffic outside gulzar saab used to stand on the window holding the window closed so that traffic sound doesn't come inside in 1986 in those circumstances he has created and if you listen to that with headphones or otherwise in good speakers you'll be amazed at the way the sounds the mixing the clarity of each and every note i have a piece of one of the songs sato bar bole bansi where the baya of the tabla and the bass guitar are going together and if i increase the bass of the music system you can only listen to the bass guitar if i reduce and increase the treble you can listen to the baya of the tabla separate two sounds mixed by this gentleman without any software without any computers innovation comes not when you have fullness when you have emptiness when you have something lacking when you have resources crunch which is the biggest learning of innovation in a in a corporate if you have everything going for everybody nobody is going to know one has to create that hunger that passion in people and say let's build something show them the passion show them the path people will find the way but it cannot happen sab sahi chal raha hai sab acha chal raha hai kuch karne ki zarurat nahi hai just cash cow milking the cash cow will not get us anywhere so it's a beautiful learning and the this is i think what amazes people so youngsters they listen to say lakdi ki kaathi they start grooving to that song because of course the song is beautiful melody hai but look at the sounds he is using in that 
He's using all sorts of simple rhythms, which a child will link, relate to. Children's song used to be very complicated in India. Till Gulzar Sahib and Adi Burman came. Gaurav, in the making of this film on Pancham and the writing of the book, which won you national awards, uh, I'm sure you met a lot of these legends who today we call legends who are part of that journey and who are part of Adi Burman's journey on Mother Earth. When you interact with them one-on-one, for us at a distance, we have a different picture. But when you meet them one-on-one, what have been some of your learnings? What have you noticed about them? And what is the common factor running through all of them? What was interesting was I was approaching everybody, right? I met when we met Rishi Kapoor or Vinod Chopra, Gulzar Saab, Javed Sahab, Asha Ji, or, you know, anybody who was associated with Adi. I used to approach them thinking, what do I get from them about Adi Burman? While anybody else who would approach them will approach them with, Are, it's Gulzar Sahib, Are. In fact, uh, there's a favorite story of mine. I had met Carlos Santana in US. And I was sent for a HP event, selected from India. Some competition was there and they sent me to Las Vegas and he was performing for HP. And my chief customer officer uh, had a meet and greet pass. And he called me and he said, Gaurav, hey, listen, you've come all the way from India. I would like you to go and meet him. I, I'll meet him some other time, but why don't you just go backstage? And so there was an arrangement backstage where you can go interact with Santana, get a photograph clicked. It will be framed and sent with this lovely signal talk. All I asked him was, have you heard about Adi Burman, Mr. Santana? And he was like, sorry, sorry, come again. Can you spell his name? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? I said, his stage music arrangement looks just like yours. Brass section, there is Latin American rhythm instruments, then there is this, that, you work So he's just like your music and uh, you should check him out. And he said, you please tell me his name properly. I said, R. D. Burman. He said, thanks. I will look him up. And I said, you should. I mean, he's amazing. He's, he's, he's a dynamite. And he said, yeah, listen, I know Ravi very well. Ravi just recently passed away. So Pandit Ravi Shankar just passed away around that time. So, you know, he he spoke about him. I said, just take this musician genius out and so on. So this is how I would define my interaction. So I realized one thing that A, one has to acknowledge that somebody has become popular, famous or successful, not to come and serve you. They've done that because of their own, you know, right, their own hard work and so on. I mean, if you look at Asha Ji's stories from childhood or Gulzar Saab's stories or Javed Saab, Gulzar Saab says, I'm not, talented. I'm hardworking. If you look at Javed Sab, the struggling days that he went through or anybody, Rishi Kapoor and so on and so forth. I mean, coming from Raj Kapoor's lineage and such uh, Shashi Kapoor, Shami Kapoor, everybody is successful. So how will Rishi Kapoor become successful? He worked very hard on his turn. So one thing is that they are human. They have worked very hard. Let's acknowledge that and approach them from that space. So they are human. They will have their policies, but let's appreciate the hard work behind them. So some interactions, by the way, may not go very well. Some interactions may go very well, but so their work speaks volumes. Yeah. The person may or may not live up to your mark because they are not there to please you. It's just the moment. So we have to separate the moment from the work. And some memorable interactions I had is when Rishi Kapoor said in our film, I have done 16 films with RD. And I said, Chintu ji, you have done 17 films. He was like, you come here. How old are you? I said, I'm 27. How do you know I've done 17 films? Tell me all the names. So he's now testing me. He's, this is his love. So I told him, hey, tuck, 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 17. This guy used to come to my house here. He told me I've done 16 films. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I said, 17. And he's telling me wrong. Hey, do you have all the songs? All 17 films? I said, yes. Can you send me? Can you please send me? So she says, how now we change the conversation. So this is a very human to human conversation. He's not throwing any air. Now you won't believe Rashmi that CD. I burnt a CD. I came back to campus. I am Calicut. I burnt a CD and couriered it to him from Calicut to Bombay. And I forgot about it. 27 June, my phone rings. I'm in Calicut on a dull afternoon. I pick up the phone and he says, hi, uh, Gaurav. I said, yeah, uh, I'm Rishi Kapoor here. I said, oh, Chintu ji. So because I had written my phone number in the letter when I sent the CD and he said, Are yaar, I got all your songs all Adi Burman uh, songs and today is Adi Burman's birthday. Yaar. I got it on his birthday yaar. and he was so emotional and he was like, yaar, every year I used to send him bouquet. So these kind of things. And then I remember Gulzar Saab ko ek unka biography book diya to sign in the Bangalore Literature Festival. 
this was much after the film was made this is nasreen munni kabir's beautiful book while he was signing he was having a very serious look and there are you know 20 other people waiting to meet him and uh, this was a time when he was sitting alone and i just showed him the book from far and he told the security guy please let him come and i went and while he was signing i told him guzar sahab ye jo book hai na ye maine padhni chhod di beech mein aadhi pad ke chhod di maine to then he looked at me seriously kya hua aisa kya hua maine kaha mujhe dar hai khatam ho jayegi इतनी अच्छी बुक है तो एंड देन ही लाफ और जावेद साहब के साथ जो इंटरेक्शन हैं या आशा जी के साथ जो जैसे आशा जी को मैंने बीच में थोड़ा सा चैलेंज किया मैंने बोला कि आशा जी नहीं नहीं इन्फॉर्मेशन गलत है दे लाइक द फैक्ट दैट यू हैव एन इनेट इंटरेस्ट इन देर आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट सो आई थिंक दैट होल लव फॉर आर्ट कल्चर इज फर्स्ट सेकेंड इज लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द्यूमन बिहाइंड एंड थर्ड इज लेट्स एप्रिशिएट दार्ड वर्क दे हैव ऑल गॉन थ्रू एंड रिस्पेक्ट देर स्पेस एंड Uh, by the way any conversation that one can have about somebody's work is a beautiful conversation that can happen i mean they they would love to talk to you not about sir up to greater it has to be about uh, you wrote this line i disagree with this line or what a beautiful line post iit uh, did your career move to dubai back and then you did uh, your stint at iim how did that happen and how did your career because this is yes something that had a huge influence on you but was it also affecting decisions of how you were looking at life your career and how you were progressing or you had that typical start like every iit iim person would have yeah yeah i think my career in the first few years progressed the way it would for anybody from these campuses right so from iit then i went to dubai work in a engineering oil and gas company for 2 years i always wanted to do an mba somehow i did not even write cat exam during my iit days a lot of people were i didn't and hence i ended up going and taking up a job now i got a random job in a random engineering company jere magdermott texas based company their dubai branch and randomly i just got that job and just went there i don't know but i guess i went there to meet some of the finest i met some of the three four of the finest rd burman fans this planet has and so passionate such lovely people gopal sundaram kostu and they are there in the rd burman film also and got some brilliant collection of music and so on i mean that job for me was just grunt work engineering work nothing exciting but had a good stint met some very good people even in the company and so on but my passion was ki meko mba karna i was very very clear i don't want to do masters elsewhere or phd and so on so i was writing cat and luckily career launchers founder was there in dubai he was actually there to launch 11 12 grade uh courses or programs for nri kids and he he just gave a newspaper article uh, or an advertisement where he said in dubai in college times and he said anybody wants to prepare for i uh, for i am scat let me know i am in dubai so i just pinged him and uh, his name is shini and shini is the founder and beautiful human being they had a humble background so first his brother went to i am bangalore and shri satya and shini worked so that he can pay the fees then he came out he worked and paid fees for and both of them went to i am and then they started career launcher and the rest is history and he taught me but he taught me not cat he taught me how to be a better human being and he he told me one thing at the end of that 6 months of preparation he told me gorav i think you will crack and you will get so i got 99.02 percentile which is not bad at all but i got calls only from niti mdi i think sp gen and then i am calicut so i did my mba from i am kori kor calicut and this was the fourth i am after lucknow calicut and then indore six the top six are these older one he told me you will not believe then he took my mock interview in dubai and he tells me theek hai yaar you're okay you're fine you go back in the interview just make sure they come to rd burman i said sorry what do you mean he said you have to bring the interview to rd burman i said why because he said this is one space about which what you know nobody knows because by then i had met aasha ji once and i had corrected aasha ji also ki aasha ji aapka information thoda galat hai and she was like yaar tu bachcha mere ko bata rahe ho then i proved it to her and then she was like very happy she was she you know really blessed me and she said you you can see rd's house the how however long you want to be here and so on so shrini saw that and you will not believe rashmi all my interviews they used to ask me and i used to somehow bring it to it's like they silly question right kya puchte hain wo log ias exams i am who is your role model now the one before me said ratan tata somebody said mother teresa mai bolta adi burman ab if somebody says mother teresa what will you ask them you will not ask them why mother teresa because everybody knows that to even ashwarya i will say in mitzvah 
for this one competition i said adi varman now interview is asking yaar are you joking how can adi varman be your role model tell me how ah so now the next 10 minutes belongs to me because imagine in a 40 minutes interview 10 15 18 minutes to aapka ho gaya and then i have to tell her ki this is what he did this is how this is what we can learn leadership ye wo and they were like wow okay fine so that's how this whole th- thing played out so yeah but after uh, i am calicut i went into consulting so i went into accenture consulting did four years of consulting there from there moved to bangalore bangalore i moved after accenture uh, with an ex consultant who was working in a senior position in bangalore and he actually had met me through somebody and he just got talking and we spoke for two and a half hours and then he said by the way are you looking for a job i would like to offer you something and then he brought me to bangalore and i came to hp hewlett packard so there i spent then somewhere around seven years actually at okay. hp and then for last six years now i'm working in startups like move from a big organization to you know elephant organization to that's true so here you are IIT Bombay I am then Bangalore city calls you and you are settled completely in Bangalore and then from the typical corporate life you've moved into startups and you are now in the education space the work that you're doing is beautiful so can you tell us about this current startup that you're working with yeah so i think this is basically the closest you can get to shaping the future of the of the country or you know of the society as i was telling you i think some time back and this is how you know things get linked to what you also do personally a lot of uh, iit training coaching etc for me happened through the classroom through the good class teachers and of course my father played a role there but i strongly believe in the power of having a good classroom for our school so that's when i came across lead school and they had an opportunity and uh two years back i joined lead so lead is founded by sumit and smita they they are very very passionate for the last 10 years they are running this startup today it's a unicorn uh, i work here as chief excellence officer so what it means is that this company has books curriculum technology hardware uh, teachers in very very affordable private schools are given technology to teach in the best possible manner so the books are lead 50% material is in the books 50% will be in the tablet teacher will be given daily lesson plans and she just needs to come prepared and just follow the lesson plan there will be some videos played some activities to be done and so on and so forth so that enhances the way classroom teaching happens because in these schools teachers technically don't get trained well for teaching they don't get the resources to make good lesson plans some of them are not even trained teachers actually they're just there because it's a job and they live nearby so with this power of technology they are able to incorporate in their regular teaching the best practices what any good school in a big city or a big country will be exposed to so there are teaching methodologies etc so my team actually trains them does the mindset shift works with the principals and owners and makes them understand that this is a good way because inherently nobody likes change Correct. somehow we are all yeah we love status quo so how do you change and uh, was the acceptance easy uh, is it something that they are receptive to or are there people who are still not comfortable sure so i think this one there are people who will still be uncomfortable but the biggest piece here is habit formation so for 90% of our teachers my team tries to get them into a habit of using this so once they start using it they see that the whole teaching methodology has become so seamless for them and it's become part of their life and see people resist change but once they get into it and a habit is formed and typically takes 66 or days right so 2 to 3 months it will take but then once teachers start using it the acceptance is very very high so we have a very solid 90% plus Uh, schools who retain with us they complete their three year contract a lot of them renew also after that so most of them renew uh, with lead school so i think that way this has shown enough we are now in 3000 schools oh. so there's enough proof of concept across 22 states of the country and uh, union territories everywhere we are there any any particular story uh, gorav on that journey of yours uh, especially with this startup where uh, 
it gave you the signal that uh, you were on a path that you were supposed to be on. Like, because Adi Berman gave you so much yeah. all through your journey. So in this journey, have you met any kid or feedback from a kid which gave you that immense satisfaction that you've made the right choice? Absolutely. I think there are many, many stories. So see, I can tell you a couple of them, right? So we went to this place. I went to visit a school in Akbarpur. This is near Lucknow. And this is complete, uh, you know, there are mango trees and you can't see any houses, any buildings. You're just driving through a tiny road. And when we reached the school, the school owner, who is also the principal, very passionate about education, but he's also not a trained teacher or anything. He just had some land and his father left him with, you know, they used to actually, he used to repair radios and other things in his early days. And then he just thought, if I have land, I'm in the middle of five villages, why not open a school? And he just opened a school. And even when we went there, he didn't have enough classrooms and 11th grade, 12th grade children were under the mango tree. They were mm-hmm. studying under the mango tree while others, the uh, junior grades were in the classroom. He came out and he was very, very emotional. He said, sir, you have come all the way here. Nobody comes here to meet. Everybody just gives books and goes. So he was first touched with that. The second thing is his children. Uh, he then organized some Q&A with them. And the kind of questions, it just looked like if the setting was a big city, you would have not even, you know, missed that these children were actually from Akbarpur versus from Bangalore or were not from Mumbai and so on. The kind of questions they were asking, the kind of competitions they were preparing for, the kind of hunger they had, for example, the, you know, the way they wanted to grow and excel. And they were literally asking me questions like, you know, I'm reading this concept, how useful this concept will be, can you help me? So one of the things we do in LEAD is we connect everything to life. We always give context to the children. We always make it, you know, it's called concentric learning where we say, sir, I will do something. Then we do, I do, we do, and then you do. Then the child does. Whereas traditional teaching means I do, you do, I do, you do. I'll teach you something, now you go solve it. No, the we do is very important. So how do you build collaboration, thinking skills, communication skills by doing the joint group activities and so on. So there was nothing, nothing lacking in these students. And we run something called as LEAD Championship. And one lakh students participate from LEAD schools, out of which 40, 45 are selected for finals. And this year finals took place in Bangalore. Now, this ratio is tougher than IAS exam or IIT exam. From one lakh, you have 40 selections. And you should see the presentations they were making. I mean, there were these girls from Kashmir who, in a competition, we told them, create an app. So they made an app for mental health. Mm-hmm. And she went on to the both of them, uh, classmates, they went on to talk about how it is so on. Then we had, you know, and all the presentations were in English, aided by some slides or some presentations that they had made or some projects that they had made. They brought it. Some of them had come to a big city like Bangalore for the first time. Yeah. They were overwhelmed with the setting, but on stage, they were super confident and in fact, Chetan Bhagat was one of the judges also, one of the guests in the uh, in the lead championship. And he came and he was like, he just kept taking videos because he couldn't believe what he's seeing. And these are all uh, children coming from cities. Some of the towns you have not even heard the names of. You know, it's very difficult for somebody to relate ki, achha, achha, this is where this place is, this is where this, no. So these are so many stories and teachers and principals and owners who've seen a big transformation through this. I know, I know. And talking about transformation, we had the pandemic, which hit everyone, whether we liked it or not, most of us, I assume got transformed, because it got us all back to the starting point again, to reflect and see how life can be more meaningful. All of us took some lessons. What were your reflections from the pandemic? I think one of the key things that one has to accept. I think there's a lot of acceptance that has come in. The fact that the world around us is volatile. It is uncertain. There has to be chaos. And, you know, you can't make sense of everything around, right? So one learning for me is it is futile to start forecasting and predicting things, right? A lot of us take pride in the election, wo match tomorrow it will rain, day after tomorrow this will happen. I think it is all not worth it. It's not good to invest in predictions. It's good to invest in preparedness. Just prepare. 
anything can go wrong so the biggest definition of risk is when you have thought about everything and then something happens which you have not thought about that is risk so how can we prepare about it so i think this whole uh, agility to respond to situations around contentment that we spoke about in the beginning of this talk when you asked me you know how do you develop that sense of contentment that is very very important third is let's not look for satisfaction success happiness somewhere outside the the whole circle of concern should be within what i have is what i want it is not about what i want is whether i have that or not i have something i want it you are happy otherwise it becomes very very difficult the you know the other lesson is that <coughs> today when people are looking at pandemic and i remember the second phase especially yeah was the toughest phase it yeah. just snatched somebody from everybody's family and so on and it was unbelievably tough but you know charlie chaplin said said once that life is a tragedy when you look at it in close up but when you look at it in long shot it's a comedy so this whole pandemic also taught us that what were the kind of things we were doing you know taking plate and hitting it with spoon and clapping and all i mean all sorts of things we were doing but at the end of the day we were looking for a sense of purpose a sense of meaning and a gratitude to thank people who were helping the society at large and so on so i think it's very very important for us to understand that yes there will be stress yes there will be tough times but what you have nobody can snatch it away from you yeah. because what you have earned all your pedigrees and all the family around you and uh, you know the happy memories and so on like they say don't cry because it's over smile because it happened so these small small moments are very very precious and i think one has to have a good strong uh, catalog of things achievements and so on which you can dip into dive into when things go wrong i think that is very very important what matters is what you should have around you rather than looking at yeah the car was of no use for example that the damn car we spoke about at the beginning of the talk what will you do you can't even go out yeah. so you, you better have a good collection of books or movies or uh, these small things or toys or books or whatever it is for you to enjoy i mean that two hours that god has given you extra in a day after work and personal you know obligations and everything what are you doing with those two hours so let's build some passion some hobby i always tell people you have to have a hobby otherwise uh, it's boring don't live for others and on this note three life lessons gorab uh, like as much as you have enjoyed life there's so much about life that you are also reflecting on and uh, everything you saw from the pandemic also is pretty deep three life lessons that you hold very dear what i feel is what you feel strongly about is what turns into your slogan or mantra or you know something that you abide by till you find something better or good and that is the process of evolution yeah. so that is one key thing and hence there's nothing wrong in if you're changing for the good you're changing for the better nothing wrong in i would definitely say when i said you know invest in a passion or a hobby elvis presley also once said that if you enjoy spending time on something though it's not related to your academics or profession and so on if you're enjoying time that's fine it is not the waste of time it will come handy to you one day now if after 10 years you will look back and say oh this was useless then stop doing it but trust me i mean you won't believe what i was doing couple of days back uh, i had some spare time on sunday afternoon and i was actually going through a movie soundtrack of rd and i knew that he was involved in the background score himself he used to sit in the recordings and so i ripped the complete background score of that movie so just deleted all the dialogues and took and now i have 22 minutes of background score of a movie and i found some music pieces which nobody has heard because it's there in a movie it's not there in a cd so nothing is a waste of time now it's part of my music collection right so how do you find new music of a composer who died 30 years back this is how you find it and uh, i know after 10 years also i will cherish it so my point is if you are interested now today in something you will be interesting tomorrow for somebody mm-hmm. so one has to invest time in some of these things that is one definite life lesson that i can think of the second thing i can think of is you know one has to also understand that some of these things uh you know anything that 
achievers have i realize when i look at biographies and look at people who've been successful and we have spoken about a life journey and you've seen me for last almost 7 8 years now you know any success takes at least 20 years and i always say uh, it's a beautiful phrase by somebody that overnight success takes 20 years to make mm-hmm. so let's not forget that you can't rush into because i have 20000 songs of rd burman doesn't mean i will become an encyclopedia in less than 3 months it doesn't work like that it has to be through this i have heard his songs through cassettes they used to get stuck the tape used to come out of the cassette and then you take a pencil and you start putting it back i can tell you side a first song then side b last song is which one because you will listen to every song 1000 times because you can't afford that 35 rupees cassette till your parents give you that next 40 rupees pocket money then you go and look for cassette somewhere so things take time organically to grow so when a child says i'm getting bored thank god <laughs> is lovely the child is getting bored in today's day and age if somebody is getting bored hopefully that person that child that human being will you know invest time in something and like raju hirani when he made mona by mbbs these were his diary notes from his uh, you know friends from school who went to medical college and he stayed in somebody's hostel so he used to write notes from medical days because he had some close friends he used to share a lot of anecdotes from that diary he wrote some 30 years back or 20 years back he made a blockbuster film called munna band so organic growth will take time if any in harvard uh, they did a beautiful study where they put two fish one in a warmer water one in a colder water than sea water than than whatever uh, fresh river water and the one who was the fish which was in the warmer setup she grew very fast and the one who was in the colder setup grew slowly then they took both of them and put them in the natural normal temperature and then finally over time they both grew to the same size but eventually the one who grew very very fast she died first okay. and the one who had grown slower was more steady sturdy and she could survive so body also teaches us that you can't just grow somebody into a giant and say they will no because the tissues will be hollow they'll be weak the bones won't be ready or whatever happens with that fish so learning development growth will take time please invest you cannot read three books and become a leadership guru you have to read 3000 books out of which possibly 2900 will not make sense but to find that 100 you have to go through three or something and that is very very critical you cannot shorten a life's journey if you want to do that please experience through somebody else's life then read biographies you will learn because everybody has solved some problem or the other in the last yeah. you know 3000 years you will find and finally i would just end uh, i had actually kept one line for this podcast uh, this i don't know where i heard in one of the podcast i heard recently on youtube in one of the literature festivals So somebody said right so three things i've told you one is be interested now to be interesting later second things take time please invest time organically and the third i would say definitely is the you know so it's a beautiful share which says agar masti zinda hai to hasti zinda hai so you have to be you know uh, happy go lucky and have your it's okay to have a good wish bone good backbone but you need a funny bone तो अगर मस्ती जिंदा है तो हस्ती जिंदा है वरना पूरी दुनिया जबरदस्ती जिंदा है आई थिंक यू हैव टू आल्सो अनवाइंड हैव फन एंड प्लीज स्टिक टू पीपल हु कैन अनवाइंड हु कैन हेल्प यू हैव फन हु आर नॉट विद यू बिकॉज ऑफ योर डेजिग्नेशन और बिकॉज यू नो सो आई लव टॉकिंग मीटिंग यू रश्मि फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव नो आइडिया हु आई एम वेर आई कम फ्रॉम बट दैट टू आवर्स वन आवर थ्री आवर्स इंटरेक्शन दैट वी हैव इट इज एन आई who connect it is not what is yours and what is mine that connects yeah and it's a beautiful name you have given to this podcast you and i thank you gorov like you said we've known each other for 7 8 years but the gorov today that i saw is completely different so i wish and pray your hasti and your masti stay with you <laughs> because that's what makes you such a wonderful zabardast companion to have whether on stage or off stage 
stay blessed, Gaurav, and honor having you on You and I with Rashmi Shetty. Enjoyed myself thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rashmi. It was a pleasure. And thank you for calling me for this. It was fun. Completely. With that, we complete this episode of You and I with Rashmi Shetty. Do let us know if you know inspirational people whose story needs to be heard. You can write in at rashmi.thirdeye at gmail.com. That is R-A-S-H-M-I dot T-H-E-T-H-I-R-D-E-Y-E at gmail.com.